All right, now to this story. Photos tell a horrifying story. An American tourist in recovery back in the U.S. and telling his story tonight about a nightmare in Mexico. He was mugged and left for dead. A strict do not travel alert posted to six additional Mexican states, all due to an increased risk of crime and kidnapping, including a high level of cartel violence. Mexican security forces were outgunned by a cartel, all caught on camera. The number of tourists and vacationers who go missing in a year is uncountable. It's tragic, really, because these people were only looking to spend their holidays or long weekends away from home, visiting families in another country or relaxing on a beach somewhere. They never expected it to be their last trip. In this video, we'll look at several tourists who got tortured on camera for the world to see. Every year, thousands and probably millions of tourists travel around the world hoping to experience the best times of their lives. But unfortunately, the world is a dangerous place and bad things happen to people when they least expect it. The list of missing tourists is substantially long, but we will only focus on a few individuals whose cases are related to organized crimes. Benjamin Gammond. Un juez de Oaxaca vinculó a proceso a Cruz Irving Martínez, quien el viernes agredió a machetazos a tres ciudadanos argentinos, entre ellos Benjamín Gamón, de 23 años, quien murió el lunes tras resultar con lesiones graves en la cabeza. El hoy imputado es acusado de tentativa de homicidio y lesiones calificadas, por lo que fue trasladado al penal de alta seguridad de Mau. Benjamin Gammon was a 23-year-old rugby player for Club Tala in Argentina. According to Benjamin's family, the young man had spent some time in Mexico, making a living as a waiter. After Benjamin had finished his work in Tulum, he and his friends decided to travel to the other side of Mexico for a vacation. It was one of those spontaneous trips with your friends, where you go to have fun and spend money, which was supposed to be a nice reward after months of hard work. Benjamin was accompanied by his friend, Santiago Lastra, and Santiago's girlfriend, Macarena Gonzalez. The three friends kick-started their trip by heading out to an island in Villa de Tutupec, Mexico. On their way to the island, they met a man by the name of Cruz Martinez Flores on a boat. Martinez approached Benjamin and his friends and introduced himself as a surf instructor. They exchanged conversations like they would with anyone else, and Martinez was quite friendly and welcoming. Everything seemed fine until the next day when the group ran into Martinez again. This time, Benjamin was the person who approached him. Benjamin asked Martinez if he knew where they could purchase surfboards, which was a normal question for tourists. But Benjamin's friends stated that Martinez had a completely different attitude towards them this time. They claimed that Martinez looked at them like he didn't know who they were or why they were even talking to him. Benjamin and his friends found that interaction a little unsettling, so they ventured to the opposite side of the beach. Out of the blue, a deranged Martinez charged at Benjamin with a machete, attacking him viciously while yelling, they sent you in a hysterical manner. Benjamin suffered serious injuries to his head, arm, neck, and chest. It was a horrific scene. Witnessing this brutal scene, Benjamin's friends did their best to rescue him from the murderous man, but they were also hit with the machete in the process. Santiago suffered a hand injury and a fracture, while Macarena sustained deep cuts on her back. The authorities were contacted, and Martinez was arrested. The paramedics who tended to the tourists couldn't believe that something like this could have happened. It is reported that on this island, people would sleep with their doors open. The community prides itself on peacefulness and security. Things like this don't usually happen on the island. I mean, there's a first time for everything. Anyway, Benjamin was rushed to a nearby hospital and later transferred to a larger facility in Mexico City where he sadly passed away. Authorities were at a loss as to why this incident occurred. One minute, everything was fine. Then you have a 21-year-old surf instructor turning into a madman and attacking an Argentinian tourist out of nowhere. The municipal president of Villa de Tutupec issued a statement saying that Martinez wasn't a resident of Guerrero and was only there to find work. He added that the surf instructor was suffering from psychological problems and had consumed toxic substances before the attack happened, which seems like a typical answer. Blame everything on mental health and substances. We got the suspect, case closed. But is it really that simple? Speculation started to surface on what could be the cause of this attack. Some believed that Martinez was a former member of a cartel and things didn't end well with their partnership, so he was being hunted by the organization. Martinez might have attacked Benjamin because he mistook the man as a cartel member who was there to harm him, but that is only speculation. The machete attack will remain a mystery until some other information surfaces. Lizbeth Flores. 23-year-old Lisbeth Flores from Brownsville was found dead in Mexico on Tuesday, just a day after Brownsville police filed a missing persons report. Today, her mother, heartbroken and devastated, wants answers. 
Lizbeth Flores was a 23-year-old woman who lived in Brownsville, Texas. On August 9, 2020, Lizbeth reportedly left her home and walked across the Veterans International Bridge, entering the Mexican border, to visit her boyfriend, who is the father of her eight-month-old son and four-year-old daughter. When Lizbeth didn't return that night, her mother, Maria Rubio, reported her missing. On August 11, 2020, Lizbeth's body was found in Matamoros, near a construction site. Authorities had reasons to believe that Lizbeth was the victim of a violent armed robbery, and her attacker is a man by the name of Braulio Martin, who is a sex offender and a member of a drug cartel, though it is believed the attack was unrelated to any cartel activities. Still, Martin is accused of luring Lizbeth to Matamoros, Mexico by contacting her and telling her that her boyfriend had been kidnapped. Martin must have told Lizbeth that she had to pay a ransom to save her boyfriend's life. None of it was true. Instead, Martin lured Lizbeth into a trap, robbed her, tortured her, and eventually killed her. It was reported that Lizbeth was subjected to cruel punishment before she died. The brutal nature of this crime is unfathomable. The reason why Martin chose to target Lizbeth Flores specifically is unclear, but it doesn't make a difference to Lizbeth's family and children. They've lost a daughter, sister, and mother to violence and inhumanity. Patrick Braxton Andrew. After a frantic search, Mexican authorities say they have found the body of missing North Carolina teacher Patrick Braxton Andrew and that he was killed by a member of a drug cartel. Patrick Braxton Andrew was a 34-year-old Spanish teacher from North Carolina. According to his family, Patrick frequently travels to Central America. Being fluent in Spanish helps make his travels easier. Patrick's next destination on his travel plan was to visit the beautiful Copper Canyon, located in the Sierra Madre Occidental in Chihuahua, Mexico. On October 24, 2018, Patrick left North Carolina and traveled to Mexico, where he boarded a train the next day to Copper Canyon National Park and arrived in Urique on October 26 or 27. According to Patrick's parents, they last spoke with him on October 28th. He was supposed to meet up with his brother two days later in Mexico City, but he never showed up. This was extremely alarming for Patrick's family, so they contacted the hotel where Patrick was staying in Urique. The hotel reported that Patrick left the hotel on October 28th for a walk and didn't return. Patrick's family alerted the authorities, and it quickly became a missing persons case. On November 17th, 2018, Patrick Braxton Andrew's body was discovered not far away from the village of Gaia Palenia. What's strange about this discovery is that the area where his body was found had already been searched. Authorities believed that the body was recently moved to the area. Later, the governor of Chihuahua, Javier Corral, confirmed that Patrick had an unfortunate encounter with drug trafficker Jose Noriel Portillo Gil, also known as El Treco, who was a member of the notorious Sinaloa cartel. The drug traffickers killed Patrick with one gunshot to the head and buried his body. But once they got word that the authorities and the media were searching for Patrick, they decided to move his body from its initial burial place. Speculation started to surface on the reason why the Sinaloa cartel targeted the American Spanish teacher. Some news reporters believe that the cartel mistook Patrick for a U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration agent. Others believed that Patrick could have been looking to purchase marijuana when the incident happened. However, both claims were denied by Governor Javier Corral. He confirmed that Patrick Braxton Andrew was an innocent tourist who unfortunately crossed paths with members of a dangerous drug cartel and suffered a tragic fate. Of course, there are many instances similar to the case of Patrick Braxton Andrew, which prompted the U.S. government to issue travel warnings in states like Chihuahua due to the increase in crime rates. Kyle McKenzie Kyle McKenzie was a 34-year-old British landscaper who was looking to spend an extended holiday vacation in Medellin, Colombia, for two months. Unfortunately, during a visit to the Cerro de las Tres Cruces, or the Hill of Three Crosses, which is a famous hiking trail and tourist attraction in Medellin, McKenzie found himself in a dangerous situation. Three gang members robbed him at gunpoint, stripped him of all his belongings, and left him to die with a serious head injury. Authorities located a severely injured Kyle McKenzie two days after the attack. By then, his condition had worsened significantly. It was reported that he was heard shouting for help near the top of the hill. McKenzie was immediately rushed to Medellin's General Hospital, where he unfortunately passed away later that day. But before he died, McKenzie was able to relay the story of his robbery to the authorities at his bedside. He told authorities he was attacked by a group of men who stole all his belongings and left him to die. Colombian Metropolitan Police had issued statements that they had obtained evidence leading to who was responsible for the horrific attack, but no arrests were made.
decade, it is believed that the attack had to do with an organized crime group in the area. It is either the work of the infamous Medellin cartel or the Urbanos. Paul Nguyen. The family of a young man from Orange County is struggling with their grief and at the same time trying to find out how and why he was killed while on vacation in Colombia. This is the tale of being careful about who you meet online. So Paul Nguyen is a 27-year-old California-based consultant and he was mesmerized by the vibrant city of Medellin. In November 2022, Paul decided to plan a vacation trip to Medellin for himself and his friend to experience the nightlife in Colombia and maybe catch a Bad Bunny concert. According to Paul's family, he has a heart for traveling and the man always comes back with incredible stories about his trips. This trip to Colombia was no different. The exciting nightlife, glamorous landscape, and lively tourist attractions. It was everything Paul had hoped for, and even more. While in Medellin, Paul wanted to push his experience to its height, so he tried his luck on the Tinder dating app, hoping to meet someone he could connect with. Indeed, his call was answered. Paul was matched with a local Colombian woman. After exchanging small conversations, they agreed to meet at a bar in the El Poblado neighborhood. Paul was elated to meet this woman he'd been conversing with on Tinder. He even snapped a photo of her and shared it with his friends on Snapchat with the caption, the language barrier is unreal. As you can see, Paul is excited to meet this woman. He's in a new city. He's exploring and having the time of his life. Everything is at its peak. In Paul's mind, nothing can go wrong. Until the next morning, when Paul's body was discovered approximately five miles from the bar, it turns out Paul was the victim of a Tinder honey trap robbery. Later, authorities arrested a woman named Evelyn Haneo Herrera, who was Paul's Tinder date, along with two alleged male accomplices who were members of a local cartel in Medellin known for trafficking, kidnapping, and robbery. Apparently, their operation included preying on unsuspecting tourists through dating apps, luring them to an unknown area, drugging them, robbing them of their belongings, and eventually ending their lives. Paul Nguyen was unknowingly one of their victims. After they knocked him out with a lethal sedative called clonazepam and robbed him of his valuables, they left him to die from the negative drug effects. It was through Paul's post of his Tinder date picture on Snapchat that authorities were able to locate the culprit behind his robbery and murder. Though the suspects were apprehended, it does little for the family to know that their loved one is not coming back. It just felt so surreal when we found out. It was just very overwhelming trying to figure everything out. And it's hard that we can't see him back home. And we're working really hard to bring him back. Charlie and Gail Anderson. They were devoted to one another, loved by everyone who knew them, and dreamed of a retirement to the Caribbean. But the dream that began for Charlie and Gail when they married 55 years ago came to a violent and tragic end when they were found dead at their home in Jamaica. Charlie and Gail Anderson are a British couple who've been married for more than 50 years. They are hardworking people and are considered pillars of their community in Manchester. The couple acquired a well-off life in the UK, but it has always been Charlie Anderson's dream to return to his hometown in Jamaica. With that in mind, Charlie and Gail Anderson relocated to Portland, Jamaica, using their life savings to build a luxurious eight-bedroom house to live out the remainder of their life in comfort. But not long after they settled into their new home, Charlie and Gail found themselves in a predicament. The old couple discovered that over $120,000 were stolen from their bank account. The two reported themselves as victims of credit fraud. Before the couple were even informed about the progress of the investigation, Charlie and Gail Anderson were found dead outside their home on June 22, 2018. The couple's house had been set on fire by a petrol bomb thrown through a window. 71-year-old Gail Anderson's body was found about 20 feet from her house with a bullet wound to her face. And 74-year-old Charlie Anderson was found about 130 feet away from his house, naked, burnt, suffering from a severe head injury and with a bullet wound on his hand. Authorities believed the couple were tortured before they were set on fire and left to die by members of a credit and debit fraud ring who had stolen thousands of dollars from the couple's bank account. The couple might have been running away from the fire when they collapsed and died outside their home. Credit and debit fraud rings in Jamaica are reportedly run by gangs, cartels, and crime organizations to finance their illegal operations. Sadly, Charlie and Gail became the targets of this illegal fraud ring while trying to live a peaceful life. Not only did these gang members steal from them, but they brutally killed them in their own home. Condolences to the Anderson family, and may Charlie and Gail rest in peace. The LeBaron Family. And we begin tonight with that horrific story. Several Americans, mothers and their children ambushed and killed in Mexico. 
Nine people killed in all, including six children, attacked while traveling in three separate cars. This story takes us back a few centuries. In 1890, the LeBaron family relocated from the United States to Mexico after a fallout with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, hoping to continue practicing their belief in polygamy or the concept of having multiple partners against LDS concepts. The LeBaron family settled in northwestern Mexico with the hope to begin a new life and to have the freedom to practice their Mormon beliefs. Although polygamy was still considered unlawful in Mexico, authorities were willing to cooperate with their community and were allowing them to practice much of their religious beliefs, including polygamous marriage. Years later down the line, the LeBaron family and the Mormon community had become well adapted to the rural side of Mexico. They became an established community of their own and were free from any outside religious or governmental interference. However, there were sometimes alleged cult activities popping up within the community, which were a bit concerning. But overall, everyone lived a normal and peaceful life away from the rest of the world. Sadly, their peaceful life was overturned by the La Linea Cartel, which is a leading sector of the renowned Juarez Cartel. On November 4th, 2019, independent fundamentalist Mormons and extended family members of the LeBaron family were en route to a family wedding at the LeBaron community when cartel gunmen opened fire at the family on the highway. The gunmen aimed at three different SUVs in which the family was traveling, killing nine people in the process. Three of them were women and six were children. All of them held dual American Mexican citizenship. The victims included Titus and Tiana Miller, who were eight-month-old twins, two-year-old Rogan Langford, 10-year-old Crystal Miller, 11-year-old Trevor Langford, 12-year-old Howard Miller, 29-year-old Christina Langford, 30-year-old Maria Ronita Miller, and 43-year-old Donna Ray Langford. It's important to note that the car Ronita Miller and her children were in burst into flames when the gunman fired at it, burning her and her children alive. Many family members and children were located afterward with injuries and bullet wounds. They were immediately transferred to the hospital. The incident was called the LeBaron and Langford Families Massacre. Turns out, this isn't the first time the Juarez Cartel targeted the LeBaron family. Their community leader, Benjamin LeBaron, was an anti-crime activist who openly criticized the cartel's illegal activities. Benjamin LeBaron and his brother-in-law, Luis Carlos Widmer, were both brutally tortured and murdered by the cartel hitmen in 2009, and their bodies were discovered on the outskirts of town. The assassination of their community leader and the LeBaron and Langford families' massacre shed light on the danger people face when speaking out against these criminal cartels in Mexico. Efforts were made to arrest the people behind these violent crimes, but it's not enough to prevent future relapses. Meanwhile, the LeBaron family had suffered many losses throughout the years due to their activism work. Anjali Riyadh. A San Jose woman is one of two tourists killed in the crossfire of a suspected gang shootout in Mexico. Police say Anjali Riot was killed last week in a tourist town along Mexico's Caribbean coast. A German woman vacationing in Mexico was also killed. Mexican police say that both women were innocent victims caught in the crossfire. Investigators say they were dining at a restaurant when gunfire broke out between two violent gangs involved in a drug sale. Anjali Riot is a 29-year-old travel blogger and resident of San Jose, California. Anjali shares a love for traveling. She's been to at least 20 countries, and she would share her experiences on her social media pages. Anjali has more than 40,000 followers on her Instagram, and her job was to travel and keep her followers entertained, which is an amazing gig for a young woman in her late 20s. In October, Anjali Riyadh and her husband, Utkar Srivastava, traveled from San Jose to Tulum, Mexico, to celebrate her birthday. On October 20th, 2021, Anjali had just finished sharing a reel of herself enjoying a beach resort in Tulum, Mexico. Moments after the post, tragedy struck. Anjali Riyadh and other tourists were enjoying their dinner at a restaurant called La Melquerida when four armed men with assault weapons opened fire at the people in the restaurant. Some of the stray bullets hit Anjali and another German woman, killing them instantly, while others were left injured. According to law enforcement officers, the shootout was a result of the rivalry between the Jalisco New Generation Cartel and their rival, Los Polones Cartel. Anjali and other tourists were considered collateral damage in their violent rivalry over trafficking territories. The drug war in Mexico between cartels and the authorities has gotten worse since the early 2000s. These criminal organizations are growing bolder by the day, and Mexican authorities are having a hard time combating their criminal enterprise, resulting in higher crime rates in certain areas of the country, like Tulum. After the shootout occurred, the German Foreign Office issued a travel advisory advising its citizens, if you are currently in the Tulum or Playa del Carmen area, do not leave your secured hotel facilities. Dustin Jackson
All right, now to this story. Photos tell a horrifying story. An American tourist in recovery back in the U.S. and telling his story tonight about a nightmare in Mexico. He was mugged and left for dead. Fortunately, Dustin is perhaps one of the luckiest victims on our list of ill-fated tourists to remain alive after the traumatic ordeal. Dustin and his wife were finishing their vacation in Cancun, Mexico. The couple headed to the airport and waited for their flight back to the United States. While waiting for their flight, Dustin decided to visit a local convenience store to buy some chewing tobacco. He took a cab to a nearby store, but they were out of chewing tobacco, so Dustin decided to return to the airport. However, his cab driver told him that he knew a place where Dustin could purchase some tobacco. Dustin took the cab driver's word for it and let him drive him to that store. Unfortunately, when Dustin got out of the cab, he was knocked unconscious. When he woke up again, Dustin found himself in a ditch. He remembered being beaten and attacked by machete-wielding thugs. It is believed that the cab driver could have been a member of a cartel or gang, but it's hard to identify which one because there are so many in that area. Cartels like Los Zetas, Sinaloa, Jalisco New Generation, or Gulf are well known for their drug business, but they're not below robbery, kidnapping, and torture. Dustin could have been a victim of any of these cartels. It is a horrific incident. Even though Dustin was alive, he sustained dreadful injuries and was left for dead by his attacker. Dustin remembers screaming for help, but was ignored by hundreds of people, including uniformed officers. He was about to give up when a female officer approached him and helped him back to the airport, where he was given proper medical care. Dustin had to go through extensive surgeries to recover from the attack. Luckily, he was able to survive to tell the horrendous story of his attack and the long-lasting effects of cartel violence in Mexico. I mean, how often does someone get tortured and left for dead in Cancun for people to just ignore the painful cries for help? Is it because Dustin was a foreigner, or are they afraid of upsetting the cartel? Whatever it is, it only proves the undeniable problem that organized crime groups in Mexico negatively affect people's lives. Latavia McGee, Eric Williams, Shaid Woodard, and Zindel Brown. Chilling images tonight appear to show four Americans kidnapped at gunpoint moments after crossing from Texas into Mexico on Friday. Latavia McGee, a resident of South Carolina, wanted to travel to Mexico for a cosmetic procedure. Why couldn't she just get one in the U.S.? Well, there's an influx of people who travel to Mexico for medical procedures due to the close proximity and much lower medical bills compared to the U.S. Latavia wanted a better deal, so she decided to travel to Mexico. But she was hesitant to travel alone, so she recruited some of her friends, including Eric Williams, Shahid Woodard, and Zindel Brown, to join her trip. On March 3, 2023, as the friend group was driving to Matamoros, Mexico for the medical appointment, unknown gunmen started firing at their minivan and forcefully pulled them over to abduct them. A recorded video went viral on social media, capturing the moment when the four Americans were kidnapped by the gunman and unwillingly ushered to the back of another pickup truck. This video depicts part of the kidnapping, appearing to show one woman walking on her own, forced into a white pickup truck. Armed men with bulletproof vests are then seen dragging other people into the vehicle. Unfortunately, Shahid Woodard and Zindel Brown sustained significant gunshot wounds from the kidnapping scene and died shortly after. The next day, when their friends and families couldn't contact anyone from the group and the video of their kidnapping had made its way around social media, authorities were alerted. The quest to locate the four Americans was in full force. The cartel must have known the authorities were on their track because they did their best to stay out of law enforcement's way. It took a collaborative effort between Mexican and American authorities to locate the missing individuals. On March 7th, 2023, Latavia McGee, Eric Williams, and the bodies of Shahid Woodard and Zindel Brown were found in a wooden shack on the outskirts of Matamoros. Latavia and Eric suffered substantial injuries, but at least they were still alive, while their friends were far from this world. The U.S. government believed the cartel members targeted the friend group because they knew these people were American citizens, and their intentions were to kidnap and hold them for ransom. But Mexican officials were quick to deny the claim, stating the cartel must have mistaken the four individuals for rival gang members. Either way, the damage has already been done. Also, there was another unexpected incident that occurred after the kidnapping, raising many questions. A handwritten apology was issued by the Gulf Cartel, who was probably the culprit responsible for the kidnapping of the four Americans, and they even attached the letter to five members of their cartel who were responsible for the killing and abduction. In the letter, the cartel apologized profusely for the unlawful incident, stating it was against their organization's motto to hurt innocent civilians. Those five members and the apology letter were tied to a vehicle and have been apprehended by the authorities. The authenticity of the letter has yet to be proven, but how likely is it for a cartel to apologize after committing a crime? 
After this incident, the U.S. once again reinstated its travel warning for Mexico, cautioning any U.S. citizen from crossing the border into Mexico while crime rates are still at their peak. Hopefully, the Mexican government can increase its efforts to battle violent cartel activities in the country to provide a safe environment for its people and travelers. Which tourist's story was the most significant for you? For all the tourists and travelers out there, please read your travel warnings before booking your trips, and please, stay safe. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so we can notify you of any travel risks coming your way.